Hi everyone, this is Jonathan from GeoPlus. In this video, I will show you how we can import points from a LiDAR file along an alignment to generate the ground surface for a linear project, such as a road, power line, etc. The first step is to import the alignment from a LAN XML file. I could also create one from a polyline in the CAD or previously done in the field data. As you can see, when I import the LAN XML file, it gives me the choice of what I want to import. In this file, there's only the alignment. As you can see, the alignment has been automatically created. Let's draw it on the CAD so you'll see what the project looks like. Now I'll select an empty surface to add an outline. The outline itself could be determined either by a drawn line, an already known series of points, the edge of a surface, or, like in this case, a corridor along the alignment. I just need to select the alignment and set an offset on each side of it. Now, as you can see, the elevation of the outline is unknown will later be interpolated from the surface triangulation. I'll draw the outline in the CAD so you'll see exactly what has been done. Now let's see that from the top and a bit closer, shall we? Now I'll just put the view back to where it was before. It's now time to import the LiDAR point cloud. We will go on the LiDAR last file menu and go select a file. We can either import last or text file. Here the ground point cloud has been exported in the text file, so let me select it. In last file, the parameters are already known, but in case of text files, each column can be interchanged by the one who created the file. So we let you choose which column represents what. In this case, there's only the ground classification and only the XYZ are available. But if the file would have included the p-code, class and intensity, we could have selected a good column. The open last file button import the points with the set parameters. Now let's set the parameters. The density is a sequential elimination of points. Let's set it to 100%. It should only be diminished to make quick preview of very large files. I will also enable the simplification. It's not required, but since there are 2 million points and many of them are unnecessary, it will be easier to work with a simplified surface. Slope tolerance indicate that two adjacent triangles which have a variation of slope greater than that value will automatically be kept. Also, the elevation tolerance ensure that two adjacent points with an elevation variation greater than that value will be kept. Next step in the procedure is to set the surface destination. We just select the surface and transfer the points to it. We don't want to erase the points in the surface since it's the outline that we already determined. The points that will be transferred into the surface will only be those within the outline. The other points will automatically be discarded. Since this preliminary triangulation don't take the outline in consideration, the preview itself ain't interesting, so I'll pass over it. Now let's go back to the surface and make the final triangulation. For this, we select the surface and go on the drawing submenu. This triangulation will take the outline in consideration and interpolate its elevation. Now let me show you a preview of the surface. The software offers a preview viewer faster than drawing the surface in the CAD and manipulating it. 
It also takes less memory to run and offers some options like viewing the triangles as solid, as wireframe, only the points, and so forth. It's now time for a profile creation. It's quite easy as you'll see. First, let's create one by right-clicking on Profile in the left menu. Next, we select the surface that the profile will represent. We also select the profile style, which will indicate what font and line style will be used, the elevation and chaining scale, the grid definition and such. Such styles are defined in the Preference in the top menu. The path of the profile is determined by an alignment. In this case, I'll take the original one, but I could have created a new one with the drawn follow line. We could also insert more than one alignment, each would be represented in the profile. Now let's set the position where the profile will be drawn in the CAD. For that, we can either write the position or use a contextual menu by right-clicking on Number field. It allows two choices for the positioning. Either select a known point in the database or pick a coordinate in the CAD. When I want to pick a point, the window minimizes itself to let me make my selection and then return its coordinates. I could snap an element, but I'll just make a random point. The final setting is to set what will be shown in the profile. The surface will show how the selected triangulation reacts along a path. The line represents the vertical curve of the alignment, while the PI connects each PI of the alignment regardless of the vertical curve. Now let's draw the profile to see what has been made. As you can see, with these preferences the profile is pretty long. We could have set them to split the profile at a certain distance for a better plotting. Now let's erase that profile and create cross sections. As with the profile, we need to right click on the cross section menu to create a new cross section. When it's created, I'll just select it to adjust the settings. We then select the base surface, the one that is currently being used. The surface that we would want to compare to would be indicated in the field reference surface. It's important to make the distinction because it alters the possible choice of the surface for the volume. We also select the alignment over which the cross section will be made. It will automatically set the beginning and the end of the alignment by its length, but we could also specify a station to begin and end with. As I said before, the surface to compare to for the cut and fill is set here. The few parameters left to set are the vertical and horizontal scales, the offset, which means the distance each side of the alignment that is represented in the cross sections, and the interval between each cross section. The default of these is set by the section's preference. Instead of drawing the cross sections in the CAD, I'll just show you our viewer for the cross sections. If a reference surface was set, we would see the volume and formation of that particular station and the cumulative results. We could also see the cut and fill polygons directly on the section. In this viewer, you can go back and forth from one section to the other or select a specific cross section. This concludes the presentation. You can see that it was quite easy to create a profile and cross sections along a corridor created with LiDAR data. Have a nice day!